The decisive factor for how Xiong Jihan was able to get within the top 100 was the unique stat force. Of course, martial power is a great unique stat too, but before unlocking the nameless divine arts, it's nothing more than strength, stamina and speed put together. It cannot match up to force, which is a power that transcends reality, such as absolute territory, mana reinforcement and telekinesis. Even then there are different weight classes. The power of the force Baron used was on a different level. Force is a stat in proportion to mana and divine power. Baron had been born with great mana, so his force is at least double the force of Xiong Jihan's. Jihan may have precise control, but that means nothing in front of absolute power. Baron had reached first in ranking with just his power alone. He wasn't keeping his first place because of luck. He had been famous for his diamond rank mana ever since he was a bronze. Fighting him head-on would be an act of suicide for our boy. He needs to unlock nameless divine arts as soon as possible, or he will get shit on by Baron. After his brief exercise, Jihan checked his status window. He gazed at Baron's portrait, and no matter how long he looked at it, Jihan couldn't believe this was truly the same person. He had heard that Baron attempted to appear more mature upon becoming a guildmaster. But Jihan wondered what Baron had done to change so drastically. Well, folks, since Jihan is blind, let me tell you what Baron did to change so much. Firstly, he grew his beard. Secondly, he altered his hairstyle. And thirdly, he began wearing more sophisticated attire. Suddenly, Jihan's phone started buzzing. He picked it up and saw it was Li Haiyon. He wondered if she was calling to thank him. Jihan greeted her with a hello, and Haiyon asked him for advice on whom to bet on in the silver promotion battles. Taken aback by the request, Jihan paused before responding. The next day, in the Divergent Guild. Someone suddenly called Haiyon, and turning nervously she answered. It was Gayong, who explained that she was there to escort Haiyon to the next meeting location. Haiyon, realizing it was already time, apologized and asked for five more minutes to finish her tasks. Gaiyong inquired if something was wrong, and Haiyon confessed that she'd asked Jihan for more pics earlier. Looking at her with disappointment, Gaiyong questioned if she wasn't ashamed. Haiyon replied that she had already suffered losing money and requested Gaiyong to be a bit more considerate. Gaiyong inquired about Jihan's advice, and Haiyon responded by mentioning that Jihan is participating in the global top 100. She also shared that Baron from the US is attending. Haiyon explained that Jihan recommended placing a bet on him for first place. Gaiyong remarked on Jihan's confidence, and Haiyon agreed, stating it made sense. Gaiyong then said, With Baron in the mix, how would Jihan win against someone who flies around raining down attacks? Haiyon responded, Right? You think so too, right? She continued by stating that Baron would be the safe choice, so she was a bit shaken because Jihan predicted the betting results too accurately for the Japan-Korea match. Even though Jihan advised her to vote for him, she contemplated betting Baron. However, inexplicably, Gaiyong found herself inclined to disagree with Haiyong. Suddenly, Haiyong inquired about Gaiyong's well-being, asking about her battle net scores and acknowledging the evident dedication she had been displaying lately. After these words, Gaiyong fell silent, clenching her fists, wrapped in bandages. Meanwhile, Jihan, having finished scrutinizing his status window, closed his eyes, took a deep breath, and then reopened them to exhale. With a determined look, he increased his martial power by one point, reaching 30, asserting that all conditions were met. Closing his eyes again, the system indicated that the Wanderer's eye was reacting. His eyes snapped open, and before him materialized the constellation, Wandering Martial God, detecting him through his traces. In the enveloping darkness, Jihan could sense a familiar feeling, just like the last time. The Wandering Martial God gazed upon him, and recognized Jihan as its successor, initiating the bestowal of the Nameless Divine Arts. In his past life, Jihan had received significant assistance from this entity. Typically, a constellation sponsorship carried substantial consequences. Yet the wandering martial god made no demands of Jihan. 
shortly after Jihan received a system notification indicating the acquisition of the martial arts techniques, three talents martial devotion and flashing sky thunder steps. Jihan then expresses his goal to reach 30 in martial power, but his words are abruptly cut short as the wandering martial god starts frowning. Confused, Jihan questions what is happening, pondering if the connection with the deity got severed. A notification reveals that the deity is displeased because Jihan's three dantians are already opened. As Jihan's confusion grows, the system explains that the wandering martial god is extremely wary of him. Jihan remains puzzled, wondering why the deity is cautious just because his three dantians are open. He questions why a divine being would be wary of such a thing, expressing his bewilderment. Suddenly, the deity begins cancelling the martial arts technique succession and retracts its traces. Following this, a sharp pain surges in Jihan's right eye, and as he opens it, he finds himself on his knees, confused about his return. Swiftly checking his status window, he exclaims that it's a disaster because his gift has vanished. The message reveals, previous world ranking top 7th in the world Song Jihan, with the top 100 promotional round just ahead of him. He'd lost his most important aspect. The next day, as Sia returned from school, she was picked up by Jihan. While riding through the road, Jihan asked her if she felt like the burden had been lifted off her shoulders. Sia agreed, stating that he was completely right. She felt refreshed. After awakening, Sia decided to drop out of the academy. The main reason students attend the academy is for the gift, and most drop out after awakening. If you continue with the academy, your friends sign contracts with guilds and undergo training putting them ahead of you in life. Sia chose to take training from Jihan, giving her even less reason to continue with the academy. Jihan's mind is at ease now, knowing Sia won't face any more problems. However, his biggest concern is himself. The top 100 tournament is tomorrow, and he wonders what he will do. Not only did he lose the Wanderer's Eye, but he also failed to completely inherit the Nameless Divine Arts, an S-rank skill passed down through fragments. It's a skill imbued with a fragment of nameless divine arts, currently encompassing the three talents, martial devotion, flashing sky thundersteps, and upon the customization of the three divine secrets to suit the user, or upon discovering the true name of the nameless, the user can wholly awaken nameless divine arts. With a change in Jihan's expression, Sia remarks that he doesn't seem to be in a good mood, and asks if it's due to the top 100 promotion round. Jihan, with a nervous expression, replies, Ah, yeah, sure. However, he inwardly admits, although it's really more of his twisted future that's bothering him because of what happened yesterday, his future got completely changed. Suddenly, Sia expresses her confidence that he will win anyway, citing his knack for finding solutions. She playfully envisions him coming home and declaring, I got first again. She giggles and contemplates getting into betting, confidently stating that she would bet everything on him securing first place. Jihan advises her against it, warning that she could get into trouble. Sia playfully argues, Boo, you even streamed a betting live so you can do it, but I can't. Jihan tells her she can't bet because she's too young. Sia protests, calling it ridiculous, but then casually dismisses the idea claiming she doesn't want to do it anyway. As Ji Han prepares to respond, his eyes suddenly light up white, and he touches his face, wondering about the strange sensation just experienced. Later that day, Ji Han went to the playground, closed his eyes and began meditating. He sensed something strange as his left eye felt off. This sensation was unfamiliar to him, and he decided to address it. Slowly, he approached the issue, using force to pinpoint its precise location and eliminate it. Suddenly, he felt a sharp pain in his eye, making him wonder if it was even okay at this point. A notification interrupted his thoughts, stating that he had successfully eliminated the traces of the wandering martial god. The message continued, indicating that he was now completely free from the constellation's domination. Confused, Jihan pondered the meaning of free, and questioned what it meant. 
As he got up, the system clarified that he could now receive sponsorship from another constellation, leaving Jihan perplexed by the timing. He wondered if this meant he couldn't receive sponsorship before. Since the system window never lies, it meant that the martial god had been hindering Jihan all along. Grinning, Jihan sat back down, realizing that the martial god wasn't benevolent like the giving tree, but more of a parasite. Suddenly a notification arrived stating that the wandering martial god was now even more wary of him. Reading further, another notification revealed that the god had suddenly vanished. Jihan wonders what's up with that deity, he's wary of a bronze and why is he running away? He's supposed to be a god of martial arts, so what's with him? It's Jihan's second round of life, but it's still full of questions he can't answer. Either way, he won't be able to use his powers then. He brushed it off, stating he will use this opportunity to look for another constellation. Plus, it's a new opportunity at the perfect timing. He reads an epic quest instructing him to find the Shadow Queen somewhere in the audience of the Colosseum map and provoke her. The reward is 50,000 achievement points and the interest of the Shadow Queen. Let's say the Shadow Queen will sponsor him, but then what about tomorrow? Jihan thought inwardly. He needs to somehow compensate for the lack of the martial god. Suddenly he stopped his sentence and remembered that he had this. We are not shown what he meant by this. The next day at the Colosseum, fireworks are being ignited, colouring the sky in different colours. Today, the bronze top 100 promotion round begins and the game will continue until one player is left standing. It instructs them to prove that they are the best. The chat was excited, counting down, and people cheering for South Korea because of Jihan. The round started, and Jihan said that he doesn't have any intentions of fighting each and every extra. So, he tells the people surrounding him to come at him all at once. With a determined expression, he plans to make this quick. Jihan's punches were so powerful that he killed many who came towards him. The chat was confused, wondering why everyone was after Jihan. Someone explained that Jihan is popular overseas too, known as someone to be feared. As people attacked him from the front, others attacked from behind. Being the legend he is, he used his force to deflect a purple attack aimed at him from behind towards the man attacking from the front. He then rushed towards the purple mage, who charged up multiple magic attacks, only to be punched squarely in the face by Jihan, sending him flying. Inwardly, Jihan remarked that aside from Baron, they were all pretty weak, so he decided to go easy instead of wasting energy. However, his words were cut short as a sword was about to pierce his face. Blocking the attack, Jihan turned around. His eyes widened as he found Gaiyong is the one who attacked him, leaving him shocked and wondering why she was there. And with that, the video concludes. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other videos if you enjoyed this one.